Devin is in the class over there. They're starting a class today about uh, kind of all the things, the ways that a, uh, a cell phone changes your life. And most of them are not for the good, I will tell you that. But if you're interested in that study, it's in there. Um, and it won't hurt my feelings if you get it and walk out of here. So, <laughs> Because that is a big deal anymore. It is... Uh, I've known in my own life, um, you feel like you, you're out of touch or whatever it is, and you can't um, you can't go anywhere without it. It's not like the uh, what's, what's that bank card? Don't go anywhere without it. Remember the commercial? It's like your phone anymore. You don't go anywhere without the thing. There's some good to it, but most of it it takes over. Anyway, if you're interested in that, it's over there. So. Today we're going to talk about preparation. Devin's sermon a couple weeks ago, or it might have been last week, I forget now which, um, he was talking about in, in the first part of James about um, trials and tribulations and being prepared for those and being ready for those kinds of things. And it kind of um, struck a note with me that maybe we need to talk about that a little bit more. Um, I know from my own life, being prepared for different things and being ready for them and knowing what to do about it when you, is half the battle. Um, you know, there's many times I've got prepared for whatever situation, I've done, you know, my homework, I've done all the checks and balances and all that kind of thing, and then we get to the actual climax of the deal and it's just kind of anticlimactic because we were prepared for everything. I like it that way. <laughs> My personality is one of getting ready, preparing in advance, and uh, as ready as you can be for a lot of things, and then being able to deal with it as it comes, and then make it, you know, drama is not a good thing. Uh, I have family that lives by drama. It's just, it, it wears you out, you know. Why don't we just be calm, get ready and get prepared and not be that way? So anyway, we're talking about preparation. What is, what is preparation? Does anybody have a definition for preparation in your mind you want to give us? Thinking ahead. Okay. You can't go through life as what? Without any preparation. Without any preparation. Okay. You can't go through life without any. Um, all right. Somebody else? Being proactive, okay? Being proactive for the situation that you're going to face or possibly could face. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Before an event, pre, before an event. This is what this is what the uh, several different dictionaries that I looked at talk about. Pre it's an action or a process of making ready are being made ready for use or consideration. Okay? It's an action or process of being made ready, or being ready, or something making you ready for something. Right? Okay? Here's another one. Um, process of getting something ready for a particular purpose or making arrangements for something. I like that one when it talks about for a particular purpose. Okay? Uh, most of us will prepare for something that is that a purpose or a uh, action that's going to take place. How many in here have been preparing for their retirement since they started work? Everybody in here to some degree has been preparing for the time when we leave the workforce. Uh, 
whether that be with your uh, 401k, whether that be with a, in, our, in my case, a craft, which is a educational kind of thing. Um, all of us pay into the government um, social security taxes for, for all that kind of stuff. So we've been preparing for our leaving the workforce. Now I'm not going to say for us to, um, in our physical sense, that's what we're doing. I've got some guys that work with me that uh, one of them is uh, 78, one of them is 73, and the one of them is 75. And they're still working. Um, and I've asked them all three, why, why are you here? I mean, what, what, now they're all afraid. They, they've heard about their friends that have retired and they go home and they die within a week, you know, all that kind of thing. So they want to keep busy. They want to keep doing something, keep some value in their life as they work around and do those kinds of things. Um, and I wonder, did, you know, their, their work was their life. Their work was their preparation. Maybe they didn't prepare for something afterwards. But they prepared in that way. Um, so we can prepare in the physical sense for something in the future. When I was a kid, um, uh, I loved baseball, by the way. I loved playing baseball and, and all the things that go along with baseball. Baseball is kind of a slow game. If you, if you want action, you know, football and soccer and all them things have a little bit more action, but baseball, you got to think when you play baseball. Uh, I had a coach one time when I was little that um, all of our practice, about 45% of, I mean, uh, we practiced for an hour, about 45 minutes of our practice was preparation for situations. Randy, do you know what situational <coughs> preparation is in baseball? What do you do? Do what? You practice it. You practice it. So we would play situational baseball. He, all of those that weren't out in the field would be lined up over here on the right by first base, and he'd stick us on different bases, and he'd say to the people in the field, it's, it's two outs, or it's one out, a count on the batter, something, three and one, whatever it is. If the ball's hit to you, what are you going to do? And so we'd have to tell him what, I was, what we were going to do if the ball was hit to us. And then the rest of the players had to tell us what they were going to do if the ball was hit to first base, second base. It, you know, sometimes we were aggravated. Uh, we wanted to hit, you know. We wanted to hit. Give us the bat. He was more interested in teaching us the technical nature of the game and being prepared for any situation that happens on the baseball diamond. So that was drilled into my head early on in the game of baseball, being prepared. So every time a guy come up, you look at what, what the situation is and figure out what are you going to do with the ball if it's hit to you, right? So physically we do that. We do that also in a way of uh, sports for any situation, football, all those kinds of things. I haven't figured out what you prepare for in soccer except running around circles, so I haven't figured that one out. So, never did play soccer, but being prepared for a situation or being made ready for a situation. What do you do with your children? We're all older adults in here and we've had children, we have grandchildren. I had a grandchild stay, with, stay home with us, come home with us yesterday and spend the night. Um, and so I gave her the task this morning to water my fruit trees that are out there. So I'm getting her ready. <laughs> her, her grandmother didn't quite agree with me, but I was preparing her. <laughs> making her ready for a situation. Making her ready to know that, hey, we're all here to do and pull together. It's a farm. You've got to work on it. You got to pull your weight. What else do you do with your children? What do you prepare them for? Okay. Oh, 
Okay, we educate them. We teach them about the Bible. We teach them about... People in here would teach their kids about the Bible, typically, and teach them about those kinds of things. What else do you teach your children? <laughs> she taught them not to for people to dread for you to come to visit them. I got you. Okay. Okay. And you prepared them before you got there. Okay. I, I, I like that. I like that. Prepare them at home for the situation that you're going to see in a social environment. Okay? You, you prepare your children socially. One of the things I try to do is prepare them. Dude. You know what? I was messed up with this. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Excuse me. Failure, okay? Deal with failure. Now, how do you do that? You push them off a cliff, or? Okay. Yeah. I always wanted to play the baseball, but uh, always wanted to bat. But the rest of it, come, you got to do that too. Yes, sir. Okay. This too shall pass. In regard to what? Okay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Okay, I heard something over here. Somebody grumbled something. What? Anybody want to speak up about it? Okay, we'll, we're going to get into that later. Um, this idea um, of being so prepared and being ready and being, uh, you know, in our country, it's kind of like being, being self-made man, whatever you want to call it, to the point of where we, we don't need God. We don't need Jesus. Um, and where, where does that where does that fit with this idea of preparedness? Because we read about being pre about preparedness from the beginning to the very end of the Bible. Um, many of the, the big um, men of faith, people of faith that we have read about in the Bible, they were prepared way before the actual event in their life typically happened. And they were preparing for this. Um, one of them that we'll talk about is David. You know, what does guarding the sheep have to do for preparing for being king of Israel? Well, you know, facing the lions, facing the, the dangers, being alone, caring for something that needs caring for. That So all of those things in his life prepared him for his walk with God as it should be. And the thing about that is, and especially in him, is what you brought up, is he depended on God. God gave me the strength to face a lion with the, with the sling. 
God gave me the strength to face Goliath with the sling. Um, he prepared. He was ready. I bet there's, he threw a million rocks with that sling before the first lion ever showed up. Had to. All of us do that. But it was through the strength of God that got him where he was. We talk about our children and preparing them for something. Um, I'm 59 years old. I'll be 60 next January. And I'm still a child to my parents. Um, my parents are going through some things right now. Um, my mom's surgery was, went well. Um, there's no more cancer in her, in her lungs, so she is, she's well. So thank, thank you for your prayers, and people have asked me about that. Um, but she, one of these ideas of preparedness, has prepared her funeral and everything a couple, three years ago. Um, she has it all lined up already. And I said, why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing this? And she said, because I don't want to be a burden to you guys later. If I get to where I cannot do this, I want to be able to do it when I'm still thinking. And then it won't be a burden to you later. Okay? It sounds kind of... I'm going to pronounce it macabre or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's, it is a fact of life. Nobody gets out of this world without going through death. We don't. So she's preparing us for it. Um, this kind of surgery and this kind of thing that's going on. She, she got us, her children, ready for the time she won't be here. So we prepare for bad things like that. Um, and we will prepare our children the same way. And we need to. We need to make sure that they understand it. So we can prepare physically. We can prepare mentally by going to school, learning, or ABCs, arithmetic, all those kind of things. We can prepare spiritually. Uh, we come to Sunday school. We've got a whole bunch of little kids over here in Sunday school right now. Um, we prepare them at home by reading Bible stories to them, talking about the life of, of God, the life of Jesus, and how he interacts in, with us in our life. We prepare our children for that. Um, or we should, reading them Bible stories and all that. It's, it's um, although the Sunday school helps, and the, the teachers that teach that Sunday school help. But the greatest impact on those kids' lives biblically is at home. It's when the parents take that interest in them and do that at home. These people help. We all help in here. But the greatest impact is at home. And we cannot forget that. And I'm talking to a bunch of old people that don't have no kids at home no more. Except for you guys. I'll talk to you for a while. you got kids at home. You're learning, right? You're figuring it out. Listen to all these white hairs. They'll tell you about it. All right? <laughs> so there's, a, there's some at home over there. So. <laughs> but very few. So we've got to work with our grandchildren. We've got to teach, continue to work with that kind of situation. The devil is um, interesting in the way he attacks families anymore. He attacks them with busyness. In, in this, this idea of preparedness has got a two-edged sword. We can, the devil can say, well, you need to prepare for all these things and keep you so busy that you forget about the spiritualness of it. Uh, we, get, we forget about the spiritual aspects of what really is important that they need, need to be prepared for. We take the social meaning of preparedness and it overrides everything. It overrides the spiritualness because they've got to be ready for what's in this world. No, they've got to be ready for what God expects of them in this world. Um, <clears throat> in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the text for the sermon, or sermons class, in James, 
it talks about the gifts that God gives us, that that God will give us in this instance. He talks about the wisdom. If you ask, he'll give it to you. So what father would give their children ungood gifts, bad gifts, right? But how many times is that where we start? Do we start with God? Give me wisdom in the situation. Um, (laughs) Made a joke a couple times. We were talking about uh, being um, patients. And then he sticks you and your wife and your mother and father in a canoe on the Spring River. And you have prayed for patience, so he'd give you an opportunity to show what that patience all means. Uh, That was a bad deal. (laughs) We pray for these things. We ask for these things. We, We, he says, seek, ask, knock. All of those things, do we do that? Do, uh, do we go to God, or do we wait and go to God at the very end after it all crashed? And then say, fix it. When we should start and prepare them when they're young and little for that situation, not wait till they're old, older, especially with our kids. We prepare, uh, why prepare? We prepare for our comfort. We have already talked about that on our... Uh, Retirement, Uh, we prepare for um, our homes, we keep them in shape and in in condition that will keep us warm, keep us cool, provide us water, uh, those kind of things. We we prepare for our comfort quite a bit. Uh, We prepare for, this is going to be interesting, reasonable situations. Uh, in this con- in this church right now, there's uh, there's some cameras outside that are looking at the parking lot. He can see them back there on the TV screen. Um, we have police officers that are uh, part of this congregation, and then there's a there's a sit- you know we we've got a situation awareness of possible problems that could happen because of this what's going on in the country today about situation that could happen in churches. Do we want that to happen here? No. Do we expect it to happen here? No. But it's reasonable and prudent to prepare for a situation like that. And we have taken those what steps we can without making this an armed castle to prepare for a reasonable situation. I'm, uh, I've got a little farm out here, and so on, on my computer I've, I've got some people that are, they, they're uh, homestead, talk about homestead situation. Um, and then that can lead you to, to preppers. Anybody know what a prepper is? I've heard all that term. About um, some of them go to such an extreme that they'll go out into the wilds of Montana and build their thing and they're, they're holed up in there and waiting for, waiting for Armageddon to come or their idea of Armageddon. And they're, that's, that's not a reasonable situation um, for a couple of reasons, but you know, one of them for Christians is we need to be a part of this world, we need to be in this world and uh, that's, not, that's not a... But do we prepare um, we're in the middle of our garden season, and you know we've got I got stuff on top of Robbie's kitchen table. And yesterday she whacked up the cabbage and blanched it and put it in things and put it in the freezer. And that's a reasonable preparedness for as we go along, needing food this coming winter. All right, reasonableness. Um, we need to prepare for, why do we prepare? We, we prepare for reasonable situations like that. We prepare socially to fit in. What does it mean for you to prepare socially to, to fit in? What does that mean to you all? Huh? 
what does it mean for you to prepare socially to Okay. Is that our position in Christ is to prepare to fit in with the world or to bring them to the Christ? Okay. Do you want to stay in? Yes. Because I, you know, our kids are told from school and everywhere that they have to fit in to be a part of the crowd. That's that's not really something we should prepare to do. We should prepare them. As James said, with, uh, with the knowledge of the Lord. Okay. And I've, I've sometimes prepared to stand against the crowd. Okay. <clears throat> Paul said, "Not the crowd makes the whole man in some way." Yes. yes. There's different social politeness um, that you teach your children and that you should adhere to. You know, you, you teach them to respect authority. All right. So two ideas here is we are in the world but not of the world. But in but in bringing those lo lost in the world to Christ, um, there are some things that we do. Um, if you in in the New Testament we read about a lot of situations that we we find a little bit. Conflicting. We talked about this in the hospital this weekend with uh, with mom some because she was talking about um, the Nazarite vow that that uh, I think it was Paul had to, had Timothy and still continuing to do that. Why would he do that? You know, why would he? Um, if if I'm a Christian, I'm supposed to follow Christ. Why would I take something from the Old Testament, and bring it to the or, or something like that? So that question of being all things to all people is true. So long as we don't, you know, what we say, our brain falls out and we we forget what we're doing. We forget we're leading to Christ. Yes, sir. Correct. They, they weren't going along with the crowd, and they continued to speak to about the Lord. That's that's where I'm talking about. You know, our society today, you can't talk about Jesus. You bring him up at work, and you're not to get fired. You bring him up at school, and you'll be ostracized. We need to prepare our young people for that. Correct. And I, I agree with that. And how we do it. He's, he, um, it's in Galatians, he talks about do it in love and, and peace. You still do that. And it comes with the circumstances that are then. Those men had to stand up and say, we, we can't stop but speak. The rocks would cry out if we withheld the gospel. So they had to continue to do that. But then you look again at all of the apostles that Jesus picked, they weren't all the same people. They, if you look at them in a social sense, each one of them went and could, uh, could influence a different set of people, a different group of folks. They're all preaching about Christ. Uh, I feel like Peter sometimes. Um, there are certain situations where 
um, where I face the lion. And then the next time, I can't. I think we've all been there. There's some times where we're ready, we face the lion, we face the devil, we do what we need to do, we speak in the way we need to speak. And then and sometimes, as Peter says, he, he or when Paul con- was condemning Peter for um, when he came back to Jerusalem, he didn't, he didn't stand up. He didn't put forth the gospel as he should have put forth the gospel. Um, when he was standing with the Judaizing teachers when it, when, about the Gentiles. We seem to have both of it inside of us, but there, we cannot, what I'm talking about today is preparedness. How do we prepare our children and grandchildren? How do we prepare them for what will happen to them in the, in, in the world? We prepare them socially. We do, um, we, we do, we seem to go to extremes sometimes to prepare our children to be social fit in as the rest of the world is but do we do we do like he said do we prepare them to fit into the world as Christians uh, do we prepare them to fit into the world when they speak truth and love or is it such a battle that it's not love at all it's just conflict when we speak about Christ when we show Christ to the to uh, to others when we teach our children to show Christ to others I know uh, when I was a kid, um, I had, um, um, there was about three or four of us would go, that's when you had an open campus and you could, you could go eat your lunch in town or whatever, as long as you're back for school later. Um, and our campus was right there, uh, just a couple blocks from downtown, so we'd walk downtown to eat our lunch and go back. And um, They were all... There was four of us. Three of them were Baptists, and then I was a Church of Christ. So we, we got to discussing sometimes to where the pharmacist said we couldn't come back in there. So <laughs> they had a lunch counter in there. But it got, it got arguing. It got to be an argument and a push and, a, you know, uh, all that kind of thing. None of it about love and compassion or the will of God in that sense. And that's sometimes where we end up when we, when we do that. We forget about being able to, to teach and love. Uh, that's the harder thing. Uh, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just got to let your actions teach others. Let your life teach others. So how do we teach our children that? How do we prepare them socially? Yes, sir. You talked about teaching starting young. You mentioned that er- earlier. Starting when they're when they're little, um, and teach them at that point discipline, respect for their parents and for all those kinds of things. And and uh, I'm not going to say that they're going to they all turn out right, but they have a better opportunity and a better chance to. Um, you know, my daughter is, is, uh, does foster care. She's adopted a child. Um, and I think about this situation, train them up when they're young and, and that kind of thing. And we get them, we, in, in that kind of situation, a lot of, you, a lot of you have, well, most of them are over there, but they have, have young ones do foster care and that kind of thing. And they're, they're older. Um, you don't get them as young 
and you're trying to figure out well, how do how do I break these old habits and create these new habits? Um, in foster care, uh, there's you cannot discipline a child that's in foster care. I mean, you can't sit them in the corner um, and try to do that kind of discipline with them. Sometimes that doesn't quite get all their attention that needs to be gotten, but. Um, It's almost like your, your your hands are tied. You're trying to watch these kids and try to mature them, in, uh, and it's it's hard to do. But if you don't do it, um, there's I've had a lot of people ask, how can how can you guys do that? Take them in your home like that and have them for a year and then have to give them back into a situation that you know is poor for them and. The only prayer I pray for that is, is their time with us and their time with my daughter is maybe the only God they'll ever see. Hopefully there'll be more, and we pray for that. But um, we have to be ready for those situations, and we have to do what we can in those situations to show God. So we prepare socially, and sometimes we prepare to fit in so much that we we forget that we're Christians, and I will I will say that sometimes. Um, what, question is, well, what do we prepare for? What do you prepare for? We prepare for hard times, I guess. That's our retirement thing, and our uh, we prepare for our vocation. We prepare for our jobs, things we do. A lot of folks in here and have uh, we we've gone to, you know, we start school at uh, what is it, age five, six when we go to kindergarten. And then we go up to twelfth grade and we graduate. Some of us go on to college for another four to six years, <laughs> whichever. Some even go past that, want to, want to get their doctorate or master's, and it's another four to, four to five years for that. And we spend a lot of money to prepare educationally for our vocation or whatever we're doing. We spend a lot of effort and time, homework, class projects, all those kind of things that we have to do. Um, I think I've been to two or three things this, this year with my oldest granddaughter that's in, that's in school now, different programs and stuff she was showing us and all that kind of thing. I'd forgotten about all that till got a grandchild. Now, <laughs> see it again. So we prepare for our vocation, for what we're doing. How many of us prepare for godly service? How many of us prepare for godly service? This is what James is telling his people in one two. He says, consider it joy when you run into these obstacles. So if you think about it, he's preparing them. That perfect law that's 
that's in your heart, verse 25, that, that will give us the freedom. And is it a lack of faith because we don't speak out? I feel that I've been doing that. Well, will God take care of me anyway? And the scripture says he will. But we need to we need to prepare. Sure. I like, I like what you were saying. It's like prepare and for to fight instead of preparing to fight, you know. Right. Like be man, uh, do it all the time. They can ride the waves, they can ride the storms. You know. They they could prepare and just not go, but they do. You know? And I think that's important. I think it's important to know what to prepare for. You know, prepare to to have wisdom to face fights, you know, to, to face trials and tribulations. I think that's how we can prepare a kid, like prepare them in a way to when something comes along in life, they know how to stand, they know how, they know not to compromise their, their faith and their values and, the, and, and what they've learned, but to stand for yourself. One of the things that, that I found out about the, the Mormon church, they sent these, their elders out, you know, the young men out. And an elder said, or one of the uh, Mormons said, we don't send those kids out to make converts. We send them out to strengthen them in their faith and they won't fall away from us. And so that, that's preparing them. Upside down sometimes. <laughs> well, that we're we got to stop right here, but that's what we'll pick up on next week. Is this idea of preparing for godly service? And um, I keep try, I can't think of the, the word we used. Uh, I'll think of it next week. But it's uh, it's it's the society today and how they do things. To where there's no nobody's wrong, everybody's right. Anyway, huh? Political correctness. All right, I got. It.